In two verses of the Holy Quran, the Almighty refers to the creation of the human sexes, male and female, and shows us, with simplicity, from which the sex of the human is created. But before we see in detail these two verses of the Holy Quran, we will make a brief presentation of the process of human sex determination, according to science today. The human body is composed of billions of cells, each cell contains a nucleus, in each nucleus, there is 46 chromosomes, where is stored all the genetic information of the human body. These 46 chromosomes, are divided, into 23 pairs, of which, 23 chromosomes, are maternal origin, and 23 chromosomes, of paternal origin. Each chromosome, is composed of two identical chromatrids, one to another. Therefore, each chromosome is represented in the cell, by two identical copies. One says that the chromosome is twofold. Chromosome pairs, numbered from 1 to 22, are homologous, and are called autosomes. The 23rd pair of chromosomes, called heterochromosomes, or sex chromosomes determine the sex of the individual. Women, have two X chromosomes, while, men have one X chromosome, and one Y chromosome. During the baby's conception, 23 single chromosomes, so with only one chromatid, carried by the ovum, are united to the 23 single chromosomes, carried by the spermatozoid. The egg, always, carries the X chromosome, while the spermatozoid, carries the X chromosome, or the Y chromosome. Just before fertilization, or union with the egg, thousands of sperm, reach the egg, and each, will try to penetrating it, to fertilize it. If the sperm, that penetrates the ovum, has the X chromosome, the baby will be a girl. On the other hand, if the sperm, that penetrates the ovum, has the Y chromosome, the baby will be a boy. In conclusion, the sex of the human being depends only on the father's sperm. If the sperm has an X chromosome, the child is a girl. And if the sperm has a Y chromosome, the child is a boy. In all cases, the mother gives only eggs with an X chromosome. Finally, the gender of the human is designed from the father's sperm. And, what is extraordinary, it is said, twice, with great simplicity, in the Holy Quran, text dating back to the 7th century. This is the first Quranic text, which relates from what is designed, the human's gender. This concerns, the verses 45 and 46, of chapter 53, the star and that he created the two spouses, the male and the female, from a sperm drop, when it is poured forth. Thus, according to verse 45, the Lord shows us, that he creates the two elements of the pair, the male and the female. It creates the possibility for humans, to be a male or a female, like almost all species on earth. Then in verse 46, he shows us, that these two possibilities, male or female, are designed from the male sperm. This is the second text, recounting the creation of the human sex. These are the verses, 36 to 40, of chapter 75, the resurrection. Does man presume that he will be left aimless? Was he not a drop, of an ejaculated sperm? Then he became a clot, then he created him, and fashioned him, and made from which, the two spouses, the male and the female, is not he, who doeth so, able to bring the dead to life. We, notice in verse 39, that the relative pronoun, ho, means, which, referring to a singular masculine noun, and mine ho, means, from which. In verses 37 and 38, we have in Arabic, not, fi, drop, is a feminine noun. Mani yumna, ejaculated sperm, is a masculine noun. 
Alika, a clot, is a feminine noun. Knowing that in verse 39, the relative pronoun, ho, which refers to a masculine noun, then, drop, and clot, are automatically excluded, since they are feminine nouns. Then, we concluded that the relative pronoun, ho, designates the unique masculine noun, namely, ejaculated sperm, mani yumna. Therefore, verse 39 is written then, and made, from the, ejaculated sperm, the two spouses, the male and the female. Finally, these verses of chapter 75 confirm what is already attested, clearly, in verses of chapter 53, namely, that the two elements of the sexes, the male and the female, are designed from the sperm, so from the male. And yet, this information, is known by the scientists, only since 1905. Indeed, in 1905, Nettie Maria Stevens (1861–1912) and Edmund Beecher Wilson (1856–1939), American geneticists, discovered independently that the basis of sex determination depends on the presence or absence of the Y chromosome. This discovery was possible only by the discovery of the chromosome in the end of 19th century. If this truth, which consists to say that the sex of the individual is conceived from the sperm of the male, is known only from the 20th century, how then to explain his presence in the Holy Quran, dating back from 7th century? This truth is stated very clearly, twice, in chapters, 53 and 75. If the Holy Quran is not a divine revelation, from where comes then, this scientific truth, in this text, dating back more than 1,400 years? <laughs>